almost on your upper gum and everything, and it's almost like sobbing. So if you're yawning or crying, let's all do it together. <laughs> if you're yawning or crying, there's kind of a hollow placement that happens back here in the chamber, but all the sound happens. A lot of sound power lifting, yeah. Yeah. You know, she's um there's things that have progressed and transformed in her life, whether she got her teeth fixed or, you know, and that sound has changed a little bit. But once we got it, we got it. I was gonna yeah. say, you're not the only one doing it. And you guys maybe didn't have the help of Cress White Strips. Well, once, you she, guys... once she found it, it kind of spread to the rest of us. Okay. I think hearing somebody else besides Cher do it kind of helped us like lift it off the page a little bit. And I used to be like, when we were in Chicago, I'd be like, that everyone would be like, do voice, do voice, do voice. And I was like, no, I can only do it when it's on the page, like in the script. I have to be in the zone. And then all you of a sudden, just, like, it's tricky because he starts out like a caricature. I mean, you know, sort of the Sonny Bono that we know from, especially from Comedy Hour, and even even earlier than that, even in their pop songs, you know, it's so it's so nasal and high and specific. And it, you know, I, I think that that's sort of the danger in uh, doing an imitation of someone specifically like him. So. Uh, I certainly did listen to the songs ad nauseum until, and sang along until I couldn't hear the difference between my voice and, and his voice at, in times. And uh, then I felt like if I could hit that in a couple of moments, then it would give me leeway to, to be not quite exactly like him the rest of the show. And I feel like you must be almost an expert at not doing the imitation, having done Frankie Valli and having done um, Barry over at uh, Beautiful and now doing Sunny. You're the expert on bringing someone to the stage, but not, you know, we're not resurrecting anyone here. Yeah, no, I think I think what they're saying, uh, what the three ladies have said is exactly right. Starting from our, our job as actors doesn't change even when you're playing a real-life person. You're still starting with the words on the page and, and doing justice to the author's work. And then, because you're playing a real-life person, a lot of your choices are sort of pre-made for you, and so then, okay, so I can't play Frankie with a limp, but I can, you know, I have, so I have to do all the things I could when I was, Injured, but like you know, you have to sort of do you know, you have to bring to life the real person that everyone has expectations of seeing. Um, so, and I think a big part of that is hitting a few important pillars like Cher's voice, Sonny's voice. Uh, for me, like the way that Sonny carries himself with his sort of uh, groin forward and the way his sort of like you know, loosey goosey arms, it is very specific. Things, right? this really, are yeah. real. And if you hit a couple of those, then you can just do your job as an actor, say, What is my action in the scene? What does my character want? and go and get it. We all remember it as it being a spectacle and high performance, but if you look at Cher, she's the eye of the storm. Everything's happening around her, and she's wearing things that may weigh 30 pounds, dripping with sequins, but she's walking like your neighbor down that stage. She's walking with confidence, but ease and comfortability, and it's very natural to her. And then Bob Mackey said to us, you gotta realize she walks the same way in jeans that she would in a couture gown, and that's what makes her so accessible. So you look up to her because there she is looking like a goddess, but yet she is grounded, and I say this in air quotes, but as normal as any woman could be, and that sort of, um, but being both sides of the coin at the same time is really unique and very rare. And she is that. She's both sides of the coin. Michael, you play Bob Mackey. 